Welcome to EPG Pathshala students. Uh, I am Dr. Ruchi Sinha. Uh, I am a faculty with the Center for Criminology and Justice in the School of Social Work, Tata Institute of Social Sciences. The module that we are going to be discussing right now is Taxonomy of Social Theories, Overview of Practice Perspectives in Social Work, Part 6. The objective of this uh, module is to further understand and exp uh, explain the radical humanist paradigms from a particular practice paradigm. It will help you understand how professional ideologies and professional uh, understanding is the base of our practice. Um, it will help uh, you also understand a new, uh, a fairly uh, underrepresented practice uh, paradigm that is criminal justice social work. So this module uh, builds upon the previous module and explains the radical humanist uh, paradigm through the practice of criminal justice social work. Uh, it was seen in that module that uh, the radical humanist paradigm has the dimensions of subjective and uh, radical change at the two ends. And uh, he has, uh, David Howe has called uh, radical humanist the raises of consciousness. So if you want to just refresh your memory, look at figure one, it will help you contextualize it. So, uh, Howe, as I've already said, has described the practitioners in this paradigm as being aware of the inequities that prevail in the society. This paradigm believes that problems faced by people, namely personal, psychological, social or emotional, can be attributed to the dehumanizing processes of the modern society. This practice here is not alleviated to uh, is not limited to alleviating personal distress but is aimed towards addressing the inequities that exist in society and the starting point for radical practice here is to challenge status quo. So we are exploring radical humanism uh, extensively through criminal justice social work and just before we delve into how criminal justice social work is radical humanism or races of consciousness, I'll give you a very short brief on what is criminal justice social work. Social work has played a very important role in the criminal justice system since the early 20th century, but it has been limited to uh, the function of rehabilitating the offender. And uh, the role of the social worker in those initial days did not permit them to make a critical analysis of the state or critical analysis of the system for that matter. As a result, workers within this practice paradigm were largely prison social workers, probation officers and maybe social workers within the juvenile justice system. And they were actually treating their clients as individuals who are pathologically disposed or are pathological, predisposed to committing crime. And instead of analyzing the deep, debilitating effects of capitalism on the individual, the role of a social worker was limited to restoring the individual back to the society, which was in tandem with the cultural norms of the society. As a result, the practice was revolving around giving faulty criminals, faulty criminals underlined, uh, the benefit of corrections, benefit of corrections by the powerful to transform them into obedient citizens. These attempts to normalize, decriminalize and transform over time were viewed with a lot of suspicions by the latter social workers who were working within the system and who were viewing the system as a power structure. So incidentally and ironically, the justice system, justice means it is open for all. The very justice system was seen as an oppressive system, which instead of doling out justice, was doling out justice in a very unjust fashion. Thus, here lies the whole challenge. The later criminal justice social workers believed that uh, 
the premise of laws and justice have to be questioned. There is a need to change laws and the attitude of the functionaries within the system needs to be addressed as well. Um, thus, the aim of practice here was not normalizing the offender. The aim of practice was sensitizing the system to the social realities outside and making them aware, making the system functionaries and making the system aware that crime is not just an outcome of individual limitations but it is an outcome of a larger social reality which has been constructed by the power holders. Thus instead of just decriminalizing the offender, the efforts are towards decriminalizing and humanizing the law as well as the justice system and hence one important thing that is uh, being addressed currently by criminal justice social workers is we are trying to decriminalize the beggary law there is something known as the uh, bombay uh, uh, prevention of beggary act which actually criminalizes beggary and we are trying to work towards decriminalizing it so the view of criminal justice social work is relatively uh, recent and it draws support, it draws a lot of support from the human rights movement. It is pitted against the criminal justice functionaries who favor the conservative view which regards offenders as rational actors primarily responsive to state interventions which aim to render the cost of crime higher than its benefits. Such an approach favors deterrent and punitive sentencing. The emphasis is extremely conservative and it is on the individual which the criminal justice uh, social workers refute. Why do we see criminal justice social work as raisers of consciousness? Let's try to understand this. The precursor as we have just gone through to criminal justice social work was corrections. Corrections implied secure detention facilities such as jails, prisons, with programs aimed at assuaging the society's demands to punish the criminal and help them repent their crime. Over time, programs such as probation, parole, a separate system for children, besides training, counseling, and providing certain de addiction programs, expanded the term of corrections to rehabilitation. Consequently, corrections came to be seen as a bridge between punishment and rehabilitation. But the aim of corrections and rehabilitation was essentially to help the individual come back to the dominant norms of society. Till the 1990s in India, the term corrections and rehabilitations were used interchangeably. So you understand that how words become very important and corrections uh, rehabilitation was limited to corrections but it seemed to tell the outer world that we had progressed from corrections to rehabilitation which in practice was not as discernible. At best the terms is thus indicated a ch chance given to these individuals who by losing their freedom were provided counseling education programs to equip them with skills to transform them into productive members of society. This approach was confined to the individual and intrapsychic explanations for behavioral problems, wherein the role of social context was completely overlooked. The emergence of radical practice thus criticized this traditional form of social work for the predominance of individualized notions of personal problems. So as social work developed as a profession, the importance of context in forming practice became the central phenomena for the growth of radical practice for criminal justice social workers. Uh, with the growth of radical social work practice, uh, the existing model of correction was uh, critiqued and it was seen as being extremely oppressive. Uh, which uh, and in fact corrections was seen as um, subscribing to an elitist definition of crime exclusively centered on the deviant individual behavior. This critique of uh, conventional practice of corrections which focused on the individual and not on the uh, 
impact of social structures such as uh, caste, class, race, sexuality, class, ability and gender began the process of actively critiquing correction. It set the stage from shifting from traditional functionalism to a politically informed radical practice. At the same time, while this was happening, the human rights movement, with its focus on social, economic and custodial justice, further highlighted the limitations of corrections. It brought forth the rampant abuse of human rights for all and especially of those uh, individuals who were away from public scrutiny especially of those who are in custody. It contextualized the issues of marginalization, vulnerability and abuse within the dem uh, democratic ideals of equality, freedom, human worth and dignity. It transposed the ideas of criminality as an individual act to one that of socially driven exclusion process. It mainstreamed the idea that criminal justice was penalizing the marginalized groups, recognized the skewed experience of abuse by the vulnerable, such as the women, children, elderly and the differently abled. Thus, criminal uh, justice social work, opposed to correction, contextualizes crime, sees it embedded in the community context and involves individual families and communities in understanding the harm caused by the offending behavior, the experiences of the victim through the collective action aimed to redefine law. It is an overarching concept with an engagement both in institutions and in the community. This is where the future of this field of practice could be moving towards facilitating journey out of institutions into communities, facilitating individuals to reclaim their identity and place in society. Criminal justice social worker practitioners are aiming to strengthen social legal dimension within the justice system. They argue the justice system needs to treat the crimes by the powerful more harshly than the crimes of the powerless. It articulates the fact that crimes perpetrated by the powerless and the powerful sections of society need to be assessed by the severity of the harm and number of people affected. They look at four dimensions, individual and social harm, extent of victimization, social agreement and probable social response. The dimensions of individual and social harm refers to direct individual harm in which the perpetrator has specifically targeted the victim. And the most serious uh, harm that comes to our mind is when the victims have been denied their life or have been perf uh, permanently injured or maimed. So the crimes that come to us instantly are murder, rape and uh, maiming of a particular limb. Uh, the next level that is analyzed is crimes that are harmful and but leads to only temporary loss of a certain capacity or capability. This is followed by those that might offend the moral sensibilities but might, might not result in a uh, direct loss. And uh, here the best example that I can give is Eve teasing. Eve teasing largely if you notice a lot of people do not even see it as a crime. But uh, women and especially girls have shared constantly that it creates a lot of problems and it has led to uh, them, uh, has, it has led to certain outcomes where girls have had to drop out of school. Now when this outcome is seen in terms of debilitating effects, it has reduced the life choices for the girls and hence it is a very serious crime. This is followed by those that might offend uh, uh, by the dimension of harm which creates moderate social harm. And here uh, something that I, we can talk about since uh, Cricket is a passion of many children and many youth in this country. Match fixing, price fixing, everything comes within this paradigm. So while we do not realize that how this entire process impacts us, if you look at price fixing, the price of the commodity 
increases and decreases according to this crime. So uh, farmer suicide which we are hearing of in our uh, daily uh, media reports, uh, it is amazing for a whole lot of people who say that a farmer who is selling his potatoes at 9 rupees per quintal is being bought at 20 rupees per kg in most of the cities. So this price fixing, if you actually see in terms of notional harm, is not only harming farmers, it's also harming the people who are buying. Should this be seen as crime or not is something that is being debated upon and criminal justice social workers are attempting to push such uh, realities into the whole paradigm of crime. And finally, they are talking about certain crimes in which people have been physically injured, killed, but it is done in the course of the general need to meet an organizational goal. And the best example that I can give you here, if you recall, Union Carbide disaster in Bhopal. So the perpetrators of this crime have uh, escaped the law of the land and uh, it was said that it was merely an accident. If it was merely an accident and it was unintended, how did so many people get impacted and why is it that the upkeep of that facility of Union Carbide was not a responsibility of the people who were running that facility. And criminal justice social workers are trying to bring this back into the main fold of justice system and saying that this is more harmful than murder or a singular situation of death. It is here that we can place the process of forced migration, the response of the upper and the middle class to demolitions and beggary. Something that does not seem to be criminal is actually more harmful than what we that is you and me, see to be harmful or think is harmful. We just understood the dimension of harm, individual and social harm. The second dimension that we can talk about is the extent of victimization that one sees uh, related to a particular crime. This includes a range of crime in which victims are highly visible as an individual crime that is murder through crimes in which several are affected by a random crime. So say by a stampede to those who are more uh, affected by being members of a particular targeted social category such as employees working in high risk occupations such as mining. Students you must be aware that there are enough people who die every day in certain industries which are harmful and hazardous. In fact it's interesting that uh, people who clean the drains of cities, those people are dying almost every day because of the toxic fumes. But that death is not linked to crime. So how do we decide one death is criminal in nature and the other death is not? Criminal justice social workers are asking these uncomfortable questions. Thus victimization can be mitigated by addressing the larger and immediate context as per the felt needs of the people. And this can be done only through redistribution of power according to the practitioners in this field of practice. The third dimension is social agreement. It would be interesting to realize that there are many formats of crime that people don't even agree are criminal in nature. And criminal just, uh, justice social work is advocating strongly to include these and ensure that the harm created by these crimes gets recognized by the state. So criminal justice social workers highlight that maximum agreement is for crimes committed by the poor and there is apathy or disinterest for the crimes committed by the powerful. Thus while a pickpocketer will be, will be beaten up by the mob or you know by or will definitely face some consequence within the criminal justice system. Now how many corrupt politicians are facing any form of action. A pickpocketer is probably picking pockets because he's poor and he's hungry. There is a rational and a reason which can be addressed. But a corrupt politician 
is committing a crime purely because of the hold of power. This is something we need to understand. Thus, while there is maximum agreement for, say, murder, moderate agreement for acts of social deviance, such as street fights, drunken balls, there is almost no agreement and there is a sense of apathy to all these crimes which are committed by the powerful. One crime that most of us have been talking about and in fact uh, the media has been bringing this to our uh, living rooms. Uh, you must be reading about uh, how substandard products are being sold to us or how um, something as uh, every day that we are consuming vegetables are being treated chemically to ensure that the profits are maximized. Now if profits are being maximized for the person who is selling, the cost that we are facing due to ill health and increased medical treatment is actually a crime that needs to be brought to the mainstream. And criminal justice social workers are trying their best to say that traditional crimes do not warrant the focus of a criminal justice system. It is these new forms of crime which have a dimension of power attached to it, which need our attention. Now, this considerable disagreement over these forms of crimes is something that we really need to work upon. And uh, deaths due to resulting from accidents and criminal neg uh, negligence of safety standards and as well as demolitions perpetuated by the state are clearly located here within this practice. And the last dimension that the social workers and criminal justice system work upon is the probable social response. It is seen that uh, there is a high probability of severe uh, sanctions for people involved in direct crime such as rape and murder. Moderate sanctions such as fines and you know, in some rare cases, for certain moderate crimes and almost no sanction for something as all pervasive prevailing crime as corruption. How many corrupt people have you seen who have been caught by the system? In fact, if you look back and uh, you see the famous Nirbhaya case, the public condemnation to the whole consequence of rape was so strong that it led to changing a whole act that is the Juvenile Justice Act. However, uh, the whole process of removing people en masse from a certain place where they have been living for years together for a development project gets no attention either in media or gets no attention by the policy makers. Why is this dichotomy existing in our social world is something that criminal justice social workers are engaging with. Thus, criminal justice social workers argue that each form of crime needs to be analyzed with consideration of the prevailing economic and social scenario. There are some crimes that are not even recognized as crimes. This needs to be rectified. There are crimes that are hidden so well by the power holders that many will deny its existence and elites actually have created an environment where they are arguing can these be seen as crime. Patriarchy, for example, is an institutionalized form of crime and such crimes are so entwined in the fabric of society that it is ensured by the power holders that it goes unnoticed. It must be clear by now students that uh, criminal justice social workers align to the sociological and political discourses that link the origin of crime to social inequality and power differentials. The subordination of particular social groups to others based on unequally distributed resources, power and prestige result in making them more vulnerable to experiencing some sort of crime or aligning to criminal behavior in their lifespans. So power here is understood as an instrument of domination where certain groups holding disproportionate amounts of power subject the powerless to comply to social, economic, cultural norms 
sanctioned by the dominant group. It is very important for practitioners within the criminal justice system to understand that there is a cyclical relationship where power differentials stem from inequality. Hence, the nature in which the society is organized involves force, power, domination. And that is the source of inequality. The exercise of power and domination by one group over the other leads to a situation of historical deprivation where certain individual groups and communities are relegated to the margins of society, living in a relative powerless situation and res resourcelessness from uh, res experiencing res resourcelessness and hence they are deprived of their basic needs and rights. One example that one can see here is the rights of the tribal societies. These people have been living in the forest for quite some time, for historic, since historical times. Today, forests have become protected spaces. We have taken away the rights of these people to live their life as they have been living historically. So in present context, they have become criminals the minute they enter the forest, which if you recall, has traditionally been their space, their place of livelihood and their place of residence. Whether they should be criminal, whether they should be criminalized or whether state needs to look at its own laws is important and it is this question that foregrounds criminal justice social work. Uh, criminal justice social work thus does not see criminal justice system as being organized uh, fairly. It aligns it to the various system and structures in society which are oppressive, which perpetuate deprivation and this uh, deprivation and oppression is so closely linked to the structures of society that getting out of it becomes very difficult. And thus when a person is being processed through the system, we have to understand that not only is this person getting processed differently, the system is also reacting to it differently. So the way probably uh, a renowned business person would be treated in the system and a small time murderer would be treated in the system would be very different. So the common thread in all forms of crime which penalize the poor and the vulnerable is the fulfillment of one party's purpose at the expense of the other. Crime entails the use of power both direct and immediate um, that is uh, you know like when one slaps another or it may be structural that is when government leaders decide to purchase armaments rather than spend on health care and nutrition criminal justice social work practice helps contextualize the dynamics of power in crime as crime of the powerless and the powerful it understands uh, power from different dimensions it sees it from the uh, lens of class gender, race and ethnicity. The original conception of crime of the powerless is based upon the accumulative evidence from predominant uh, conventional forms of crime such as murder, assault, uh, which is committed by people who hold relatively weaker positions in society. So you will see a lot of coverage of street crime, which is seen as a very serious crime. You will see a lot of coverage about um, uh, property crimes which is normally committed by a certain section of society. So working class crime is given more space over the crimes committed by the powerful and hence the ones who are uh, arrested, charge sheeted and convicted by the criminal justice system belong to a certain section vis-a-vis -vis another section. Moreover, one does not have to explicitly say here, but members of the powerful sections get away by committing some fairly serious crimes. Uh, so, acts of uh, corruption, acts of nepotism never get criminalized. And the impact of these acts is fairly serious and it is more spread out. There are more victims. However, these crimes are not recognized. If they are recognized, the treatment of the offender in the system is different. If by any chance these people get convicted, they have the uh, freedom to 
have a different uh, outcome of the justice system. And hence, if a robber or an, a mere person who has stolen a few hundred rupees gets three years of imprisonment, how is it that a person who has stolen crores of rupees from the country is still absconding? And these are important questions. Thus, not only is it that uh, uh, criminal justice social workers are saying that these crimes are not recognized, it is also questioning the ability of the powerful to resist arrest, prosecution and conviction. If I summarize criminal justice social work, I would like to say that it challenges the conventional uh, thinking of crime, exposes the relationship between political and economic injustice on one hand and the suffering of the powerless on the other. The practitioners here critique structures, boundaries, hierarchies which maintain oppression and are replicated within the criminal justice system and hence the word justice within the criminal justice system is slightly ironical for criminal justice social work practitioners. So I hope uh, through this module I have been able to inform you what criminal justice social work practice is, why is it located within the raises of consciousness and why it is a very important field of practice especially in today's context when crime and criminality is getting questioned everywhere. So with this I hope you will take time off and read the e-text on criminal justice social work and the readings attached to it. Thank you.